Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. Under the patronage of the National Security Advisor, Secretary General of the Supreme Defence Council and Commander of the Royal Guard, Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a celebration was held for planting the 100,000th mangrove tree, which was implemented by the BDF's Royal Guard in cooperation with the Ministry of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture as part of the Kingdom's afforestation plan. Upon arrival, His Highness was received by the Minister of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wail al Mubarak. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dana. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim al Hawaj. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad al Malki, and a number of officials. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was briefed on the stages of planting the mangrove oasis. His Highness then planted the 100,000th mangrove tree. The project aims to preserve marine life and maintain ecological balance. On the occasion, His Highness affirmed that the project comes in implementation of the goals of the Comprehensive Development March, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, who always supports all the Kingdom's important and vital projects. He hailed the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for the national plan for afforestation aimed at doubling the number of trees in Bahrain, increasing the green area and achieving environmental balance. His Highness stressed Bahrain's commitment to reducing carbon emissions by 50% by 2035 and reaching zero neutrality in 2060, which was launched at the 26th Conference of the Parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, which was translated into a number of initiatives, including the expansion of the cultivation of mangroves. His Highness hailed the directives of the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Ashik Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, to harness all efforts to ensure the success of this vital eco-project. He described the ambitious programme as a key milestone in Bahrain, stressing the importance of mitigating the effects of climate change in a symbiotic manner at all levels. He highlighted the need to provide an incubating environment for many fish and marine life and for birds, especially migratory birds that are abundant in Bahrain. The ceremony was also attended by the Royal Guard Deputy Commander, Major General Ahmed Khalifa al Noemi, and other invitees. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa attended the 54th graduation ceremony of the Bahrain School, held under his patronage. His Highness highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa's unwavering support of the Kingdom's educational system. His Highness noted the importance of Bahrain's educational system in driving the Kingdom's development forward. His Highness also said that education is central to shaping young Bahrainis so that they are equipped with the skills and knowledge necessary to succeed. His Highness affirmed that the Bahraini people are distinguished by the creativity and pursuit of excellence evidenced by the wide-ranging achievements. His Highness noted that education is the foundation of the Kingdom's progress and development and emphasised the importance of higher education in shaping one's dreams and aspirations. His Highness presented the graduates with the certificates, wished them success in their future endeavours and encouraged them to continue pursuing their academics with diligence and perseverance. His Highness concluded by urging students to utilise their skills and knowledge in service of the Kingdom and in line with its comprehensive development.
The executive and legislative authorities held a joint meeting to discuss the draft law approving the state general budget for the fiscal years 2023 to 2024. The meeting was headed by the Representatives Council Speaker, Ahmed Amisalem, the Shura Council Chairman, Ali Al Saleh, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The two authorities expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his directive to continue improving citizens' living standards and providing a decent life for them. Based on the outcomes of the previous meetings, a number of important initiatives were agreed upon, including adhering to the objectives of the Fiscal Balance Programme, reducing expenditure and increasing revenues, determining the priority for implementing the required projects related to infrastructure and services, launching initiatives to increase salaries in the private sector, raising work fees for non-Bahraini employees, expanding career development programmes for Bahraini employees and supporting the employment of nationals. The General Secretariat of the Representatives Council held a press conference on the approval of the state's general budget for the fiscal years 2023 to 2024. During the press conference, it was announced that a joint agreement had been reached on a number of pivotal points related to raising the standard of living for citizens, employees in the public and private sectors, retirees, in addition to the disabled and people with special needs. The most important agreements that took place between the committee and the government related to improving the standard of living were also announced in addition to the most important measures that would raise non-oil revenues without compromising citizens' interests. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its Speaker Ali Al Saleh. The Council approved a draft law ratifying the Atemis Accords of the Principles of Cooperative in its Civil Exploration in the use of the Moon, Mars, Comets and Asteroids for peaceful purposes. The final opinion was taken on a draft law ratifying the agreement between Bahrain and Japan for the mutual encouragement and protection of investment. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended a ceremony by the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing to acknowledge the roles of sponsors and partners in the success of the Fahil Care initiatives. Senior officials, sponsors and partners attended. The Interior Minister asserted that the Fahil Care is a joint project to highlight human conscience and the rich traditions of Bahrain and its people. He said that it represents one of the initiatives of the National Plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation and reinforce the values of nationalism, Bahrain Uma. It is also a fundamental approach to Bahrain's civilised journey. He expressed complete gratitude for the humanity and vision of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, reflecting his care for citizens by providing a decent living for them, highlighting His Majesty the King's care for Bahrainis and their dignity. He said that the nation and citizens are a core of an approach protected by His Majesty the King as part of his wise ruling of the country of tolerance, peace and national values inherited through generations. He also hailed the approach of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, that contributed to achieving the highest level of humanitarian and civilised development through human rights protection in all aspects. Meanwhile, the Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, said that the Fahal Khair initiative reinforced the role and position of Bahrain. He said that the initiative translates the approach of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to support family stability and provide decent living for all. He said that the initiative is part of the Interior Ministry's development and modernisation process and a comprehensive national strategy to protect human rights that includes providing economic security and social protection. The Director General said that the first campaign to list the names of those with unpaid loans received positive responses, including the support provided to the initiative by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, and President of the Supreme Council for Women by paying all debts of females in the list. In addition, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, as part of the Directors of His Majesty's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and other organisations, companies and citizens also donated. He revealed that over 93 media campaigns were organised, resulting in the collection of over 2 million BD in donations to pay loans for 500 cases. In addition, he hailed the dedication of donors to donate through over 32,000 e-payment transactions. After that, the Interior Minister honoured the initiative sponsors, partners, social media influencers, initiative committee members and organisers.
under the patronage of the Attorney General, Dr Ali al Bouainian, and cooperation with the Central Bank of Bahrain, the Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, and the Judicial and Legal Studies Institute. The first roundtable session was launched, titled Electronic Fraud, Challenges and Confrontation. Participants in the round table discussed the methods of electronic fraud crimes, visions and solutions to the relevant legal and technical challenges. The Attorney General referred to the rapid and growing development in the field of internet banking services and its impact on the diversity of the methods of electronic fraud crimes. He noted the efforts of the public prosecution in using all legal and procedural tools and mechanisms available in national legislation in this regard and referred to the legal and technical challenges in achieving this type of crime. For his part, the CBB governor, Rashid al Miraj referred to the measures taken by the bank to reduce and eliminate electronic fraud crimes, maintain the status and reputation of the financial and banking sector, and enhance the confidence of users of electronic payment systems, as a specialised work team was formed to look into electronic fraud complaints, develop appropriate solutions, and take effective steps to combat financial fraud. Our participation today uh, as PIBF, the leading training and development institute in the region, is to showcase our initiatives in the area of uh, this important uh, topic of combating um, electronic fraud. Uh, today at the BIBF, we offer more than 40 training programs specialized in the, these areas in terms of fraud management, cybersecurity management, and data privacy. We also offer around 20 professional qualifications. Our ultimate aim is to contribute in upskilling national talent in alignment with the strategic direction of the Kingdom of Bahrain in this important field. We are here. Uh, with the Central Bank of Bahrain, with the public prosecution, with the TRA, and uh, most of the financial uh, institutions and the bankings and the banking also here, just to keep recommendations and to find regulations and tools to uh, prevent uh, citizens of being part in this kind of frauds. The discussions today took a broad level and look at the spectrum of electronic crime collecting the actions taken by public and private institutions and taking different points of view for the actions that need to be taken. Uh, in benefit, we give our customers and stakeholders the assurance that we will not spare any efforts into the fight against electronic frauds. As the first day included presentation by the competent authorities, the public prosecution participated by presenting the challenges of confronting electronic fraud crimes and shed the light of increasing the efficiency of the mechanism as the experiences of countries in this regard. The recommendations and suggestions to further develop the current mechanism would be addressed in the second day of this event, which bring three main components of the digital transformation under one stage. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim al Hawaj, the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohamed Juma, and the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah al Khalifa, paid an inspection visit to Miriam bin Umran Primary Girls School in Maharit Governorate, in conjunction with the completion of its rehabilitation and maintenance as part of the Historical Schools Rehabilitation Programme. The maintenance of Historical Schools project comes in cooperation with the Ministry of Education and the Authority. It includes preparing designs and developing the best engineering solutions necessary to restore their operational capacity and traditional character through civil, construction and electrical work in accordance with approved quality standards and specifications. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasa Humedan, along with a number of officials at the Ministry, conducted an inspection visit to Bahrain Bay Utilities, directed by the French company Veolia, where they were received by a number of the company's officials. The Minister affirmed that support will continue to achieve relevant national goals, which stems from the Kingdom's interest in enhancing sustainable and clean energy and maintaining natural resources. The Minister was briefed on the company's expansion plans and the latest developments of the used systems through investing in modern technology and utilising it to operate the plant autonomously. The plant is currently providing central cooling service to a number of buildings and projects located in the Bahrain Bay area, 
while achieving several benefits at the national level, including maintaining energy sources and reducing total consumption, to be in line with the announcement of the National Energy Efficiency Action Plan and the National Renewable Energy Programme. The Minister of Sustainable Development at Nur al-Khalouf affirmed Bahrain's commitment to the UN's 2030 Agenda and to the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, as the Kingdom submitted the main messages of its second voluntary national review of the progress made in implementing the goals, ahead of the report's presentation during the high-level political forum on sustainable development next July. The main messages stress the Kingdom's institutional alignment with the SDGs, guided by the Economic Vision 2030, which identified sustainability as one of its guiding principles. The main messages noted Bahrain's prioritisation of sustainability as part of its developmental plans and strategies. Noting the forum's theme, accelerating the recovery from COVID-19 pandemic and the full implementation of the 2030 Agenda for sustainable development at all levels, the main messages highlighted the Kingdom's successful experience in combating the COVID-19 pandemic, which earned it global recognition. The Minister added that since the preparation of the Kingdom's first voluntary national review in 2018, Bahrain has witnessed acceleration in addressing key challenges, including the environmental challenges, with the Kingdom announcing its commitment to re reaching net zero emissions by 2060. The King Hammock Global Centre for Peaceful Coexistence at KHG CPC prepared a work paper on Islamic Christian religious dialogue on the sidelines of the first meeting of the Standing Committee for Islamic Christian Dialogue between the Council of Muslim Elders and the Vatican. In the work paper, the head of the Department of Interfaith Dialogue in the Vatican, Cardinal Miguel Angel Alioso, affirmed that the Vatican will cooperate with the centre in all that will enhance the cultural value that came in the Declaration of Bahrain. It praised the centre's programmes are represented by King Hamid Chair in Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence at Sapienza University in Rome. The centre's initiative to renounce hate speech through cyberspace and the King Hamid Faith in Leadership programme accredited by the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge in cooperation with the centre to support the values of peaceful coexistence and respect for the other.